All right, we're going to start off with Jason. You have come into Bellator. Your first fight, Bellator, I thought was, well, not your run. You went to the LFA for a couple fights, and you came back to Bellator. You had a big win in South Dakota that is still one of my favorite fights. I love the way you went after it. You had the fight with Ed Ruth. That was a win. I don't care what anyone says. It was horrible. <laughs> you're basically undefeated here in Bellator if you're going to take that fight away. You have worked your ass off to get to this point of getting this fight. Facing a guy like Yaroslav who has been undefeated, what does it mean to you to get this title fight here in Chicago against a guy that has never been defeated? You know what, Big John? It means the world to me to face against, you know, a competitor like Yaroslav. He's a professional. He's a profession. And... He go about business the right way, and you know I'm looking forward to get in there and mix it up with him. Amosov, I look at 27-0, like basically the best record in MMA right now. That, that's active, an active fighter. When I'm looking at that, though, like does that put any more pressure on you every time you step in that cage? Um, hello. So uh, for me, it doesn't matter. Uh, I have fight. I won't win uh, every fight. So uh, 27 and zero. It's uh, for me, it's, yeah, of course, it's good, but I won't win every fight because uh, if you fighter, uh, it's not this, uh, okay, this fight, maybe I lose, next fight, maybe I win. No, if you fighter, you can, you must uh, win every fight. So when I go to cage, of course, I won't win. That's it. Your last fight was against Logan Storley. It was your second fight against Logan, who is a teammate of Jason Jackson. You put on an incredible performance, and you told us that the first fight there was things with your camp, things that just didn't go right, and you, you were going to prove yourself, and you did prove yourself incredibly in that fight. Do you think that Jason having Logan as a teammate, someone who's been against you, you think that gives him any kind of advantage in this, that he gets some information about what you're good at, how you do it, those different elements? Um, so, yeah, of course, it's one team, but uh, different fights, uh, different fighter. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, maybe he, he talk with him, maybe he say, maybe this good, this good, this bad, this good. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but uh, I'm fight fighter and uh, I have plan. Uh, if I have fight, I have uh, every time different plan. So, last fight and next fight is different. Well, I'm going to piggyback on John's question to him, though, but Logan is one of your training partners. And what kind of advice was he able to work with you on and give you on to, to help you against him? Logan told me everything. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He didn't leave nothing out. And plus, I've been doing my study for years on fighting Yaroslav because he have been, I always wanted to intertwine and fight him because he was the best. So it wasn't just now that I have like, you know, worrying about this guy. This guy had been the best in the division. And I always wanted to compete against the best because the only way you're going to be the best is when you beat the best. And that's what I'm looking to do, fight night. A lot of people don't know this, but you still have a full-time job all the time. So working in the morning, getting up early, then training, and then going back to work, and then coming back and training at night. How do you juggle all that around preparing for a world title fight? I just don't think. I just go and move, you know, because, you know, everything is like a work for me. And that's why I show up today just like this. I didn't dress up or anything. I just show up like it's a job that I need to get done. I'm not looking at it like it's anything different from what I do outside the gym. I'm going to treat it, you know, just like another job. I got to put my best and do my best. Nothing less and nothing more. Just my best. Yaroslav, being away from your family, you go to South Beach, Florida to train for your camps and stuff. What's it like being away from your family, finally getting this fight? You know, you're looking forward to just getting back home. One more. <laughs> <laughs> you train far away from where you live. Yeah. Your, your wife and son, and you having another child I know coming up, but they live far away from you, or do they come down to, to Florida with you to train? Um, this camp, my family come to me. Oh, they came with you this yes, time? Yes, uh, and uh, not not uh, my old camp, but uh, uh, 
live different house. I live in gym every time. Sometimes I go to my family, just uh, looking, just a little bit uh, play with my son. It's my my family now. It's my big uh, motivation. My son, it's my big motivation. I very miss them. And uh, my family, for me, it's, I don't know, it's number one. It's uh, now we know situation in my country and uh, it's show me what for you number one. Number one for you when you family, when you friends, uh, safe. All right, we're going to open up the media. Go ahead, questions. So Yaroslav, you're 27 and 0 overall, 8 and 0 in Bellator, and yet ESPN only has you ranked number six in the welterweight pound for pound rankings. Does that bother you at all, especially having an unblemished record with many finishes in many different fashions? Minute translate, translator. <laughs> does it? Does it? Go ahead, John. What he's asking you is, right now in a worldwide, doesn't matter promotion. Yeah. Yeah. They have you ranked number six with five other people in front of you. Does that bother you? I number one. <laughs> there you go. Fair enough. So I, I think if you fighter, I I know uh, Jason Jackson think he number one. I think I number one. Of course. Yes. Yes. No, I don't think I'm number one yet until I beat you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if, if I think if you fighter. You think, yeah, I number one. I must uh, win uh, every fi every fighter. Mm, I think that's it. And uh, for uh, Jason Jackson, I was just curious. Um, obviously, call yourself the ass-kicking machine. Is this going to have to take the? Uh, is this going to be the hardest ass-kicking you are ever going to have to attempt when fighting a 27 and 0 guy in Yaroslav Amosov? I just have to go out and be myself. Don't overthink it and. Let the course take itself. That's all. For the champ, just question. You kind of talked about what makes you happy. Obviously, your family, your friends, knowing that they're safe. With so much unrest back home in your home country, how can you continue to stay motivated? Everyone talks about your record. Everyone talks about how good you are. And you continue to have challenges inside the cage. So how does what's going on at home influence you inside the cage? My, tran my tran best translator. <laughs> <laughs> With everything happening in Ukraine, yes. how do you focus on the fight yeah. and make it important when all these things are happening? Yeah, uh, it's my motivation too, my family, my country, because uh, I want to show this world to Ukrainian people. I want to uh, show my flag. I want to, uh, I think about the situation in Ukraine every time, and uh, it's helped me focus about fight, because I, uh, sometimes you, you train him, you think, oh, maybe, maybe hard, maybe it's too much, but sometimes, but after you remember what now in Ukraine, you think about friends who now in front line, front line, and you think, oh, for me, I'm not tired. For me, it's not hard. Hard for my uh, Ukrainian army who defends my country, who help. Uh, sorry, who who defends my country? It's very, very big respect who defends my country. And Jason, how can you remove the narrative around all this? You said you're not number one until you beat him. 27-0, the champion. Do you have to remove the narrative in order to go in there and do what you expect to do and beat him? Well, if I set him as the best, then it gonna motivate me to be the best and beat the best. And, you know, like I said, this guy, I, I don't want to take away nothing from it. It's a reason why he's a champ. And it's a reason why he's 27-0. So I'm not going to be like too arrogant and be like, oh yeah, I'm number one. No, he is. And once I beat him, then they can't deny me. I am number one. A couple more guys. Yeah. What's up, Jason? Uh, there's a lot of great, right over here, there's a lot of great Jamaican fighters out there, Aljamain Sterling, Leon Edwards, Randy Rudeboy Brown, a bunch of you guys representing your country well. What, would it mean, what does it mean to you to represent Jamaica within the realm of mixed martial arts and to bring a belt back? 
Well, I'm not going to bring the belt back to Jamaica. I'm bringing the belt back to Killcliff yeah, FC for sure. And um, it means everything to me, not just to, only to my country, but to my family. I fight for my family just as uh, he fights for his family. I have kids as well that I have to provide for. So, you know, I'm fighting for my people as well, just as uh, he is. So it's just as important for me as well. And then one for Yaroslav. Uh, we mentioned you're undoubtedly one of the greatest fighters on the planet, regardless of promotion or weight class. You have the belts, you have the finishes, the, you know, the undefeated record. But what do you want people to think of when they hear your name? What is the legacy that you intend to or that you hope to leave behind in this career? <laughs> One second. <laughs> when people watch you fight, yeah. what do you want them to think of you? Good translator. What, what do you want them to think of you as a fighter? Legacy. Your legacy. Uh, I think I understand questions. Uh, so. I'm MMA fighter and uh, complete MMA fighter. Wrestling, let's go. Striking, let's go. So uh, I think many years ago we have many fighters who striker with uh, wrestler, you know. But now different different time. Sometimes we we see have uh, bo bo striker uh, he. He good good wrestler, you know, so different, uh, and uh, so now uh, good good complete fighters, mm -hmm. just uh, really MMA fighter, striking, wrestling, everything, yeah, it's I MMA fighter. <laughs> Thank you. It's good. Jason, you broke onto the scene in the Ultimate Fighter when your gym faced off against ATT with a win. This Kind of comes full circle since uh, since Amosov does do some work at ATT as well. Tell us about your journey from 2015 <coughs> to what can potentially be your crowning moment. Well, like I stated in the beginning, this means everything to me. And, you know, we have been beaten gyms down in South Florida, you know, top gym like ATT, you know, we've been, we've been doing it for a while. I have been doing it since uh, before I even got to Kill Cliff FC. So this right here going to mean a lot to me actually beating them as uh, we did on the Ultimate Fighter. So, you know, look, I'm looking forward to that. And to you, uh, Amosov, because you do represent ATT, is there any extra pressure to beat Kill Cliff. You're at ATT, Kill Cliff. Yes. Or no. <laughs> uh, best translator, yeah, oh, it's really. Wow. <laughs> um, so for me, for me, no, because I know many people from Kill Cliff. Uh, sometimes uh, we have uh, one sauna in uh, Miami and uh, many people uh, go to sauna together. Kill Cliff guys, uh, uh, ATT guys. And uh, for me, it's, uh, it's just sport. Uh, I think uh, I never, never angry to my uh, opponent. Every time smile, just funny. Uh, it's sport, maybe business. Who, who? I don't know. For me, it's sport and little bit business, <laughs> and uh, just respect because it's same, same, same like me. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out.